Our story begins on the island of Oahu in Hawaii. Triton, this green guy here, is trying to help a girl who's also a little different. He wants to take her to a safe place, but they're chased by a group of armed men and ended up getting hit. And where's that place? On the moon. Hidden by a protective dome, the secret city of Adelan is home of the Inhumans. Their leaders are Queen Medusa and Black Bolt, a mysteriously silent king. At the Callisto Center in California, Luis is watching a live camera feed from their moon rover. She's surprised to see it bump into nothing and then go offline. The incident prompts an emergency royal family meeting in Adelan, and it's our chance to get to know them, starting with the cousins. Karnak can make extremely accurate predictions while Gorgon has powerful hooves. And then we have the king's brother, Maximus, who has no powers whatsoever because his DNA is just human. That makes him the laughing stock of the moon. Karnak reminds everyone that the Inhumans left Earth so long ago to escape the human race and their annoying habit of terrorizing anyone who's different. Incidents like the moon rover could spark an investigation. No one wants that to happen, but some are more worried than others. Maximus wants to attack the humans and invade Earth. But luckily, no one cares about his opinion. Next in their busy day is a pterogenesis ceremony, something every inhuman teenager goes through. It's where the magic happens, in a very literal way. The ceremony is led by Kitang, the head of the genetic council, and assisted by the queen's sister, Crystal who has a teleporting dog named Lockjaw. Each kid has an individual booth with a compartment where the tarragon crystal is placed. After the cabinet is filled with smoke, the kid steps out transformed. At night, dinner is interrupted by shocking news of Triton's death. Queen Medusa translates the king's sign language to explain his secret mission. Triton was sent to Earth to rescue people who became inhumans after an accidental exposure to Terrigan. Not fully convinced that Triton passed away, Black Bolt sends Gorgon to search for him on Earth. Furious to learn that Adelan will shelter Earthlings when their resources are scarcer than ever, Maximus takes it out on Medusa. The queen uses her hair snakes to make him back off, so he goes to the genetic council with rebellion ideas and gets accused of treason. But when the guard, Oron, is given the order to arrest Maximus, she attacks Kitang instead. The truth is, all the royal guard is supporting Maximus. They storm the castle and surround Karnak, but with visual access to every possible course of action and their immediate consequences, he fights them off easily. Then, he sends everyone on alert and tells Crystal to go somewhere safe. Refusing to leave the others behind, she has Lockjaw take him to Earth. And then, she does the same with Medusa, but not before the guards hold her down and Maximus shaves her head. Black Bolt is in the quiet room when his brother comes in, and then we find out why he never speaks. His voice is the most powerful weapon in history. His own parents were fatal victims, and he has never spoke again. But now, Maximus clearly fears that he might. Luckily for him, Lockjaw shows up and teleports the king away. The guards quickly lock up Crystal before her pet gets back. In a public announcement on the dome, Maximus reports the murders of Triton and Katang. He says they're obviously under attack and King Black Bolt just took off, which kind of makes him the king now. More surprised than the Adelans are the Hawaiians at the sight of a giant dog appearing out of nowhere only to vanish again leaving a confused Black Bolt in the middle of a busy avenue. Now, the royal family is scattered all over Oahu. While Gorgon makes some Hawaiian friends, Karnak has a nasty head injury and his power isn't working anymore. At the Callisto Center, Luis has crazy theories about that moon rover, but her boss refuses to relay this nonsense to the company owner. So Luis is kindly offered some time off. Oran is sent to Earth through Aldrak, the talking wall. Her mission is to eliminate all the royals, and she'll start from the ones whose active comlink reveals their location. Black Bolt goes shopping with no money, leading to a confrontation with the police. <laughs> An accidental grunt flips over a police cruiser while lots of people are filming. While he's taken to the station, Medusa is ready for Oran. She wins the fight, but when we see what Oran's ability is, she can instantly heal from anything, including death. Meanwhile, footage of the flipped police car gets the attention of Dr. DeClan in California. He contacts Sammy a Honolulu prison inmate with a plan. On the moon, Maximus opens a door that's been shut for a long time. Even Oran is shocked to hear about her new teammate. Locked up since his pterogenesis, Mortis is a walking catastrophe. He agrees to help Maximus in exchange for freedom, 
crossing Aldrak with the rest of the backup team. Elsewhere on the island, Medusa sneaks into a fancy home to eat, change, and steal some cash. Then she sees her husband in the newspapers. Now she knows where to find him. Unlike Karnak, who's completely lost, he accidentally comes across an illegal marijuana crop and becomes a hostage. Black Bolt is not doing much better. He's put with Gen Pop as punishment for the injured cops. That's how Sammy gets to him and says they need to escape. When Oran and her team find Gorgon, Mortis is a big surprise, but so are the Hawaiians who decide to join the fight, so their forces are almost matched. But when there's a human casualty, Gorgon decides to retreat. In Adelan, Maximus tries to make Crystal publicly recognize him as the new monarch. Still, Princess of Adelan, her endorsement would mean a lot, but she takes the opportunity to run to Lockjaw and then they both vanish. In prison, Sammy helps Black Bolt escape. Right outside, Luis has been stalking the inmates from her car. She came to Hawaii following the energy bursts from the teleportations, and then she also saw Black Bolt on the news. While Medusa arrives and beats a prison guard, Dr. DeClan's helicopter is coming. He picks up Black Bolt, missing Medusa for a few seconds. With the guard's gun, she forces Luis to follow the chopper. Crystal and Lockjaw are in the middle of the woods when the dog is hit by a vehicle. The driver is a guy named Dave and he runs to get help. Still chasing the helicopter, Medusa and Luis get in trouble with the police and have to find an alternative strategy to find Black Bolt, who's also trying to find her. Declan says he'll help him with that, but then he steps outside to make a call. And guess who's on the other side? His boss, Maximus. His plan is to inject himself with some of his brother's DNA and become an inhuman too. Declan says it's not possible to collect it post-mortem, so they must keep Black Bolt alive. Hacking satellites to track the helicopter, Luis gets the location of Declan's lab. She's so excited now that she's in full YOLO mode and quickly becomes Medusa's partner in crime. Maximus calls for an extraordinary meeting with the Genetic Council, mentioning a hypothetical DNA transfusion. He asks their approval to undergo a second teragenesis, another chance to be like them. The Council rejects the idea in horror. Everyone in Adelan has learned about the dreadful consequences of a do-over. He dismisses all that as fairy tales. In Hawaii, by now, all kinds of relationships are being formed between Inhumans and Earthlings. Dave welcomes the princess and her dog to his barn, while Karnak has decided to hang out with the weed farmers a little longer, especially the female one. Gorgon tells his new friends they must part ways for their own safety. At Declan's lab, Black Bull and Sammy are getting suspicious. They decide to escape the lab, but only to find Oran waiting for them outside. But they're not the only visitors. Luis and Medusa show up in a stolen car. There's an ugly fight and some fireworks, courtesy of Mortis. All the casualties are among Oran's team, including herself. After a brief romantic reunion, King and Queen hop into the Luis mobile with a surviving opponent. Her name is Locus, and her echolocation abilities will be very useful to them. Dr. Declan is having fun playing with the dead in humans when Oran resurrects again. She contacts Maximus, but he tells her not to harm Declan or Black Bolt. Finding out about the doctor's collaboration with Maximus, she's shocked to realize this is not the revolution she expected, but more like a childish payback on an older sibling. In a completely different vibe, Dave and Crystal are dogporting all over Oahu. They're trying to find the other royals, but the island is way bigger than the princess had expected. In fact, she is amazed at how cool Earth is compared to all the horrors story she heard before. And Dave's Hakuna Matata lifestyle only adds more delight to the experience. He even teaches a human hand gesture, the hang loose of all things. Back at the weed crop, Karnak's honeymoon is over. Things have gone south with the scary farm partners who show up to collect the product. Karnak's fighting skills are intact, but he can't hide his terror of performing a plan with uncertain results. You know, like all of us. So that vulnerable position gets him captured by the gangsters. But his friends are not far from him now. The royal couple is crossing the woods with Luis and their hostage, Locus, using her power to find Karnak. She's also giving Luis her side of this whole story. She says Adelan is a strict caste society where no one can choose how to live their life. Locus wanted to be a healer, but since her teragenesis, she's been condemned to keep finding stuff. This is why she's supporting Maximus and the revolution. A bit embarrassed by the amount of truth in that, Medusa just points out that Maximus is using her as a finder right now. Back at the farm, Gorgon gets to Karnak before the others, and we see the hooves in action. 
Freeing his cousin, he takes him away before the gangsters wake up, but soon they hear gunshots behind them. It's Medusa's party also coming to the rescue. They take care of those guys, but Locust gets hit. She decides to help them with her power one last time. They think everyone from the moon is here together now, but she tells them Crystal also made it to Earth. Before she dies, Locust tells Black Bolt to be the king his people deserve. At Dave's barn, things are getting tense too. His ex-girlfriend Audrey turns out to be exactly the kind of human that makes people flee to the moon. She wants to report Crystal's family to the authorities so they can keep an eye on her kind. When she tries to take a picture, her phone is struck by Crystal's firebolt. Audrey leaves madder than ever, but now Dave has seen Crystal's power. She can control the elements. They decide to use that to send a signal to her family, and Luis is helping them find her at the same time. She has the location of the original energy bursts, so that gives them an idea of her landing point. But then Luis slightly vibrates and is forced to confess that she took Locus Comlink as a souvenir. Medusa picks it up, and it's Oran, trying to lure Black Bull back to the lab. She has Dr. DeClan and Sammy. Black Bull decides to stay with Medusa and Luis, but sends the cousins to deal with Oran. While Crystal is putting on an amazing lightning show, the cousins approach the lab with a brilliant plan. Karnak simply walks to the enemy with a confident face, and it totally works. As nobody knows his power is gone, they're afraid to act when it looks too easy. They think it can only be part of a plan in his freaky flowcharting mind. That allows him to get close enough to engage, and then they're also too distracted to see Gorgon coming. When it becomes clear that the cousins are winning, Mortis has had enough. Refusing to go back to his cell, he decides to remove his mask to blow up everything. Gorgon grabs him and tells the others to run hoofing down the exploding lab. Meanwhile, Dave takes the Inhumans to the barn where Lockjaw is waiting for them. Then Audrey arrives with the police, so Luis and Dave must stay behind to deal with that while the royals teleport to the lab. Everything is destroyed now and Gorgon is dead. So they make Declan talk and he tells him all about Maximus' plan of a second Terragenesis spiked with inhuman genes. They decide to send his people back to him through Lockjaw. And Crystal also pays a quick visit with a message from Black Bolt. He is claiming the right to call a parlay and Maximus accepts his terms. Before leaving Earth, Black Bolt takes the family to a certain beach. Everybody's jaw drops when they see Triton coming. He had arranged his meeting point in case he needed to fake his own death. Now truly complete, the royal family take Dr. Declan on a dog ride to the moon. They teleport into the royal bunker, an impenetrable underground structure built even before Adelan. After planning their next moves, they go to the castle courtyard for the parlay. Black Bull offers Declan in exchange for the throne. Initially accepting the deal, Maximus goes back on his word as soon as he has the scientist. He says they're now powerless and have nothing else to bargain with. So, it would be wise to just leave the city. Back to the bunker, the royals regroup after such a fiasco. Karnak had a sneak peek on Declan's research and he asks for permission to perform an experiment. He wants to put Gorgon through Terragenesis to see if he comes back to life. Despite the fact that they are superheroes on the moon, everyone reacts like this is ridiculous and impossible. Of course, Karnak ignores them, ambushing Oran in the control room. He says he can tell she's having doubts now. Gorgon was the head of the royal guard and he trained her for years. Not to mention that he gave his life to save her. All Karnak is asking for is a bit of her resurrecting DNA. She agrees and they inject it on Gorgon before putting him in a Terragenesis booth. Then they keep waiting, but nothing happens. Meanwhile, Triton and Medusa are coordinating an attack on Maximus while he's crossing the common area. Triton takes down his guards one by one and then takes Maximus to the bunker. As he sees Black Bolt there, he tells him about the failsafe he had in place before this. His palm must be scanned at the control room every hour, otherwise the protective dome over Adelan will be deactivated. Once the city is revealed, it would be only a matter of minutes until Earth has reduced it all to ashes. Up in the castle, Gorgon is back. Kornak doesn't see him yet because he gets jumped by some guards, who then lock him up in the quiet room. Deeply deranged by the resurrection, Gorgon accidentally kills Dr. Declan, and then he's also thrown there with Karnak. Luckily, the quiet room was built to contain sonic waves, but not brute force, so Gorgon just hooves their way out of it. Meanwhile, Crystal talks to Aldrak about a possible evacuation of Adelan. Black Bolt tries to escort Maximus to the palm scanner, but he gets away. He goes straight to the booths to have his Terragenesis and has a double surprise. Declan is gone, and so are the Terragen crystals. That's because Medusa 
Medusa took them to a human he trusts completely. Luis is proud to be in charge of them. Luis is also tasked with finding a temporary home for the 1,400 citizens that might be coming to Earth soon. In the control room, Karnak has bad news for everyone. Maximus may believe that he can stop the damage at any time, but that's not the case, and the dome already begins to falter. So, they set up Medusa's comlink into the city cameras for a dome announcement. She tells everyone the whole story, including an apology for being such lame leaders in the past. Making them believe that the threat is real is not a problem. Since the dome starts to collapse as she speaks, everyone runs to Eldrak while Lockjaw takes all the royals except Black Bolt. He decides to stay a bit longer to make sure Maximus won't be a problem again. He locks him up in the royal bunker where he can be king of the moon for as many decades as he wants, all by himself. Standing outside, Black Bolt says goodbye out loud, destroying the external structure and permanently blocking the way out. Then he runs to cross what's left of Eldrak to join Medusa in their new Earth home. And this is the end. This was a recap of the 2017 series Inhumans by TSG Marvel Television, starring Anson Mount and Sarinda Swan. So which royal family member do you like best? And what would you do with one of these abilities? Let us know in the comments below with hashtag cinema recap. Until next time.